Hey there, everyone, and welcome to the very first week of the year. We're going to be looking at all the aspects between the 1st and the 8th, and uh, I think this week uh, it's big. We have a full moon, the full moon in Cancer, which is always really nice, and I think we have, you know, the last Venus conjoined Pluto in Capricorn that we'll ever see. So when I saw this, I was like, oh, will this happen again? And to be honest, we will get another co-presence of Venus and Capricorn, sorry, Venus and Pluto together in Capricorn, but that's not going to happen until uh, November 2024. So there's a little bit of maybe hmm, a week of their co-presence, but this is the actual conjunction. So let me uh, scratch my nose and bring up my, I think I've got cat hair on me, and bring up the screen here. So we can see here, uh, this is um, Brisbane. Uh, we have Venus conjoined Pluto at 27 degrees of Capricorn. And that happens on the same day throughout all of the time zones. So this is uh, Hello 2023. And I do think this is really going to, you know, I don't, Obviously, I have to operate on regular calendars uh, to be sort of somewhat normal with other people. But, you know, if we're thinking about you know, just the Gregorian calendar and not so much the astrological calendar, it's really interesting that this is the first aspect that we have where Venus is confronting or fusing with the Lord of the Underworld. And later this year, she's going to take a journey through the underworld through the sign of Leo. So I feel that we're starting the year with a little bit of a foreshadowing of what the Venus retrograde might suggest. And particularly because this is the last one, I think that definitely brings a, a certain level of finality around the Capricorn house of your birth chart. Not saying that it's totally over, but it, you know, we're definitely getting installments of the the plot. It's almost like you've watched a series on TV or you've read a book and you're starting to think, oh, is this the last episode of the season? Because there's this kind of wind up of characters and plot lines and things like that. Maybe not the last season, but more like the last of the series. So what might we expect with this? Obviously, if you've got uh, planets or points at 27 Capricorn, um, you're definitely going to, you know, this is inviting you to reflect on, you know, the 14, 15 years that's been uh, Pluto and Capricorn because we're now January by March. We're going to have that exit um, of Pluto into Aquarius for the first time. So, again, the idea of, storylines and characters starting to finalize their journeys in a way you know on the collective venus rules women she rules art and beauty and she's the planets of trinkets and trimmings and you know this might be starting the year kind of going what do i really value what what is important where do i need to strip back or strip away um, or where do I need to kind of, you'll pry this from my cold dead hands type of energy there. You know, Venus and Capricorn, she knows her value. She's ambitious. She's prepared to kind of climb the ladder. Venus and Capricorn does really remind me of, you know, strategy. So whether that's social strategy or social climbing or more okay if I want something this is the the steps I have to take in order to get it often um you know in astrology it's probably quite clear to many of you by now that sometimes we get reverberations of the energy that's in play before the aspect actually happens so today's date is actually the 20th of December um, I'm recording it now and when I had breakfast this morning and I was just having a little bit of flick through um, Instagram, I saw three, well, actually I saw two, and I mean, there's a lot of examples, but <laughs> two really stuck out to me that were very Venus Pluto. Uh, firstly, overnight, um, I don't know like exactly where the whole saga is, but something about there was a, a verdict reached where Amber Heard had to pay Johnny Depp 1,000, sorry, not 1,000, 1 million, something to do with um, her def like her defaming him or something like that. I can't keep up. But anyway, I just thought, oh, isn't that interesting? Venus, Pluto, and having to pay money as well. 
um, Harvey Weinstein or uh, his verdict came in. Um, I've only just kind of caught a few snippets of that. Um, I don't really feel that this is maybe justice, but again, it's not a case I've been following, so I can't really comment on it. But one thing I'm really, really curious to see what eventuates is that Ghislaine Maxwell has her natal Saturn at 28 of Capricorn in the eighth house. And she also has her ascendant at 10 Gemini. So this is going to be a big month for her, in my opinion, uh, and something to watch, um, you know, whatever happens. Um, I can only speculate. Um, so there we go. So we can start to see, you know, that what's happening is starting to build already and it's not even January yet. When we look at on the personal level and your own Capricorn house, there is this sense that big a big chapter is starting to wind up. As Pluto start, starts to stare down the barrel of Aquarius, Venus goes, okay, what what do I what have I taken away from this particular cycle? How do I value this house differently? What are my goals? What are my ambitions? What are my New Year's resolutions? So I really feel that. You know, this isn't just about a new year, new me. You know, I want to lose five kilos or I want to save $10,000 or whatever it is, although that still may be part of it. But I feel like this is a little bit deeper. It's reflecting on the whole uh, Capricorn cycle, Pluto and Capricorn cycle, and how has that deeply or um, profoundly shifted the way you value that particular area of your life. Huh, what a what an aspect to begin the year, hey? So there is that sort of um, a, a deep excavation, a deep clean out. Um, and, you know, there might be something to come back to uh, when Venus retrogrades mid-year through Leo, because this conjunction happens in, you know, Saturn's domain in Capricorn. Um, and the retrograde happens in the sun's domain of Leo. So it is this sort of, you know, maybe what do I want versus what does, you know, authority want or what does the rules say or, or what do I have to do? What are my duties, responsibilities and obligations? So, again, drawing a bit of a longer bow there, but I do really feel that there's something to start a calendar year with an aspect like